Okay, for this video, we're going to look at the role of sample size and how it influences variability and our ability to detect significant differences in odds ratios. So odds ratios, as you know, and adjusted odds ratios are often determined by what's called logistic regression, which you'll get exposure to later in the course. Um, and to kind of walk you through this, uh, I'm going to just use a quick and easy way using this online software called MedCalc that does uh, crude odds ratios, odds ratios where it's just a two by two table and it calculates the uh, confidence interval and p-value. So I'll switch over to the MedCalc tool and I've got some data I've put in here in MedCalc and MedCalc uses a little different nomenclature than what we're used to when we do a two by two table but we still have the same boxes A, B, C, and D and um, it's generally made here for like clinical trials so your cases are the uh, people or animals that have the bad outcome and then the exposed and control group exposed are the ones that get some treatment the control group gets either a placebo or some comparison group maybe the current available treatment so we'll uh, create a scenario where there is this uh, toxin that's in water supplies from blue green algae called microcystin and we'll say that we're looking at liver cancer in rats that are forced to drink water that contains four micrograms per liter of this toxin. The rats that have to drink the toxin are in the exposed group. The rats that get to drink the usual lab water are in this group. And these rats maybe are prone to uh, get liver cancer. So, we might be interested in seeing whether or not exposure to the toxin in the water is associated with more of the bad outcome, liver cancer. So, among those animals, we'll say these rats that drank the toxin water with liver cancer, there were a total of 10. And then among the rats that drank lab water, there were seven that had the bad outcome. Next, we've got cases or animals that have the good outcome. These aren't cases, these are just animals that have the good outcome. And among those that drank the toxin that did not get diseased, we'll say that this, number 10, there's 10 that drank the water and did not get sick. And in the control group, they drank the toxin free water. The water didn't have any blue green algae toxin in it. And there were 13 of them. So no disease, no exposure in this group. So among those mice that were exposed, 10 got liver cancer and 10 did not. Among those in the control group, those that drank lab water, seven got liver cancer. 13 did not. So we hit this test button in here and it tells us that the odds ratio is 1.86. So the odds of disease among the rats that drank the toxin is 1.86 times higher. But can we really say that? Is it statistically significant? And as you know from previously, below one and above one suggests no statistically significant difference. The actual p-value is 0.03394. So since p is greater than 0.05, there's no significant difference. So what does this have to do with variability? Okay, so we have an odds ratio that suggests harmful. The confidence interval, though, says it could be protective, 0.52, or harmful. And then overall, how big was our sample size? 10 plus 7 is 17, plus 10 is 27, plus 13 is 40. So we had 
20 controls and 20 exposed or um, and 20 exposed. We had 40 mice in our study. Okay. Now there's a separate 95% confidence interval calculator for standard error, which is for the odds ratio, which is a standard error of the natural log, the odds ratio, which equals one over A plus one over B plus one over C plus one over D, and all that has to the square root. So it's pretty nasty calculation to have to do by hand. You're not gonna have to do it by hand. But what does the actual odds ratio and sample size have to do with one another? So let's scale this up and add a zero to each of these. Same proportion of exposure, but now we have 100 plus 100, which is 200, plus 70, which is 270, plus 130, which is 400. So instead of 40 mice, we have 400. We test it again, and we get the same odds ratio, 1.86. That didn't change. But now the confidence interval is 1.24 to 2.78, and the p-value is 0 0.0025. So this is all harmful, and as you'd expect, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. In fact, it's way below 0 0.05. It's 0 0.0025. And if we were to make this larger, instead of 400 mice, let's crank this up and study our rats. Let's study 4,000 rats. Hit the test button on it again, and what do we get? Odds ratio 1.86, that hasn't changed. Confidence interval is all significant. The p-value now is even smaller, 0 0.0001. So that's less than 0 0.05. So to compare all these numbers, the concurrent slide here, when we had 40, we had a not significant confidence interval, huge confidence interval, 6.1 or so difference. When it got tighter, the confidence interval, the odds ratio difference was maybe 2.77 minus 1.24, about 1.5, a lot different than 1.6. And then we have 4,000, the confidence interval went from 1.63 to 2.11. So as the sample size got larger and larger and larger, our ability to see a statistically significant effect increased. So our ability to say there was a significant difference became greater. So less than 0 0.0001 in this really large sample. So if you only studied 40 mice, you may not be able to have a statistically significant effect. There's too much of a possibility that your conclusion, if you said it was significant, uh, would be flawed. Whereas if you studied 4,000 mice, the ability for you to have a flawed interpretation of the 1.86 odds ratio being significant goes down tremendously. 4,000 animals and that effect, um, you're pretty confident that there was an effect. So larger sample sizes result in smaller confidence intervals. So large sample sizes have smaller confidence intervals or tighter confidence intervals because of the lack of the lower standard error and because of that, we are more likely also, when we're doing comparisons, in the case of like an odds ratio, to see a statistically significant effect. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. Thank you. Bye-bye.